Bucky's. I don't know. First time ever being here, and it is huge. Uh, but anyway, we are heading to pick up the tubular front end for uh, Raggedy Ann. Uh, but we're about a half hour away. What's happening? Um, I guess a little update. It's been kind of slow. Uh, got the uh, got the Codian tube the front end. It's here. I've got the LTR scoop, the ATM carburetor. Um, what am I missing? Fuel tech and summit orders. Yeah, summit orders. Fuel tech. I've got, I forgot to get the band clamp or the V band clamps. So I've still got a couple things to get, but we've got enough to get going and should be able to make some real good progress here in a short amount of time, hopefully. I'm getting ready to pull the engine transmission back out of it, get the tubular front end going, get it on. Um, should be able to set the engine transmission back in it, weld the front tabs up for the motor plate and it be in and good to go. Hook it all up. Um, I've got to get the vacuum pump. I gotta slot this and get all the vacuum pump set up on it. Um, windshield's probably gonna be like the last thing I do because I still have to make the electronics pay. I gotta sturdy it up or do something so that it will hold together rather than make a new board right now. Um, so yeah, it's hadn't got a whole lot done because we was waiting on parts. Now that we've got the parts, should be able to make some some pretty good progress, I think. We shall see. Making the shit out of stuff. So we got the music slides opened up. Yeah, we got the music going too. In case you didn't know, CJ's a little gangster. Cody in front end, the long tube bars goes all the way in. So we got the side cut clean out of it. And I gotta knock a hole there to get it to go through and then fit it. Right now I'm trimming this back down here for this bar. Well, it's just one. Then once I trim everything, get it welded in, should be somewhat close. Um, this one cut back to fit. So, kind of a hack job at this point. I got a small sawzall blade instead of a long one, so I'm using the grinder for a lot of shit. Hopefully it all works out good. Um, this one I may have just trimmed back a little too far. And then the TRS, K-member spacers are, they stick out further than the K-member itself. So I may have to drop it. I'm going to have to drop the K-member down to weld all the way around that once I get all that cleaned up and everything. Um, so a lot of disassembly, reassembly. Got the engine out today, transmission back out. The rear motor mate mount motor plate tabs are in. I just gotta finish welding. And then once this is all in, I can put the front ones in. Uh, I haven't decided what I wanna do right here. I thought about leaving the covers off, which looks like one of them's been all to hell. <laughs> this slide's good. But I thought about like taking this, flattening it, rolling it down, and kind of bringing it down and welding it to the bar and leaving the bar exposed as much as as much as I can. Like bring all this down to meet it, depending on how this all falls in place. 
and then maybe roll that up. Um, but I haven't decided yet. I guess we'll see how it plays out. Hopefully tomorrow we can make some big moves on this and get some uh, progress, have something to see. I'm really excited to, to get this get this on there. Um, so yeah, got to go get some supplies tomorrow after work and then come home and get after it. Maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we'll have this together tomorrow evening and be fitting the engine back in it. Kind of where I'm thinking I'm going to leave it. If I take any more of this out, it's going to, I've already beat that in. That right there, and then a little bit of that. But it's got a really nice fit right there, pretty much all the way around. It's probably one of the best fit ups I've done. And it was, I'm going to say, an accident. <laughs> but. You can get an idea how this is gonna gonna look. I'm gonna open this up a little more so I can try to to weld it. Um, don't really know how I'm gonna get to the inside, but we're gonna give her nine kinds of hell trying. And I like it. Like I think that's gonna be. Pretty badass. I think it looks real good. And this is the, I think it's the first long bar, top bar being done like this for Cody and so. Trying to make it happen. Buried in the likeness of Jesus' death. So it's Sunday. Yeah. I was hoping to fire this thing up this weekend. I don't, I don't know. It might still happen, but I don't think it's going to. I still got to get the headers on it. I'm trying to. I've had this dominator on here before and it all worked out. I'm trying to figure out how to make the throttle positioning sensor work with the carburetor. May have just figured it out. See, but, you just need to take a bathroom break, that's all. Yeah. To release all the toxins. <laughs> <laughs> so the front piece looks really good yeah 
and that is the Codian tubular front end. But we did the, the long bars all the way back. And what I noticed whenever I did it was it was a little flimsy, like whenever you would move on it and stuff. So I put those bars in it. And like this is a this is the first one, so I'm sure the additions are being looked at. I've, I've talked with him on it and what to do and should I, what's he think and all that. But I did that and then did like some welds there down the strut tower, tied it right up, tightened everything up. So yeah, I think now he's he's got a kit. He's selling them as a kit now for Fox Body so far. So yeah, it's uh, I like it. It made a big difference. I've got a lot of cleaning up to do over here, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, the idea was to somehow, you know, tie this bar to this to help just strengthen everything. I don't think we're weak though. So I still got to finish welding around these bars back here, but they're, they've got pretty good welds on them so far. Everything else is welded up. Once the front end goes on, I want to do the upper radiator support bar. That way I can fit it to the front end. Um, got that to mount. Headers to put on. Um, I mean, the nitrous lines are all hooked up. Fuel lines are all hooked up tight. I gotta do the other purges. Hook that into the ECU. And another big project is to, I gotta fit the vacuum pump over here and get the notch cut to the adjusting notch cut. Transmission cooler. And like it should, should fire up and be ready to beat on in that aspect. And then that's really when we test to see. And you see if it don't break in half when I drive it down the road. <laughs> or you do one of your infamous willies. Yeah, that'd be a little nerve wracking for first couple times, I guess. Well, it's eventually going to happen. I and mean, bend or break, we're good. It need, it's going to need an alignment big time. So we'll have to get get some of that that done. Uh, fuel log. I was looking last night for the old front end bar to cut my bracket off of it, and I couldn't find it. So I don't know where it ended up. A whole lot of stuff ended up in the scrap bin. It was not me, but I asked you when I cleaned up everything outside the door right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I'll find all kinds of stuff out there that I didn't know nothing well, about. Well, that's because you probably buried it. The cross members that you threw no, away? No, I did not throw that away. That was not me. It just flew itself. Mm -hmm. I, I don't pick stuff up and throw it away. There, there was other people that had hands. Um, but anyways, Ben, Barb, and Lloyd made the trip yesterday uh, from Dayton to Columbus to Jags. Met with Uncle Terry to get parts that I needed, so I didn't have to stop working yesterday to go up there and get the stuff. So we got the transmission cross member, the V-band clamps for the exhaust, and uh, I forget what else we got. Uh, they brought the garage a oh, TV, yeah, TV for the garage. that needs mounted before it falls over and gets broken. And then Lance brought the Dash 6 line over for the transmission cooler today, this morning. So, I mean, I think we've got a lot of everything to get it, get it fixed, get it back together. Dustin and Connor grabbed the, they got the, uh, Several parts, honestly, but the urethane for the windshield. So that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. I still got to get some whatever size that is, half inch or whatever it is to make, like the mounts for the front end. And <clears throat> but could just run it with no front end. No. <laughs> I was kidding. I know, but you... no, don't even say it. ATM busted the dominator out for me. Got it back. So uh, waiting on the 4150 now. Um, 
get this this whole linkage deal figured out and hopefully ho honestly hopefully i wanted the dominator on it anyway hopefully this thing works out nicely everything works i did take two inches worth of spacer off of it because i had that adapter on it so the scoop will sit down a little bit more um kind of anxious to fire it up and hear that it's healthy they they're hunting I, I was debating on painting all this stuff but i'm sure i will just paint it black and be done but we're just a few days um under a month left till arm drop so it's gonna be tough i ain't i ain't like some of those guys that can get stuff done fast and everything be ready and go out so we're just gonna wing it and see what we can do I think you're doing pretty good. So, next video, hopefully, some footage of us firing it, firing up, it up and yeah, maybe pulling it out of the garage. Need to go in the house, and I don't think I brought it out, did I? What? The scoop? LRT scoop. No, it's in the house on the kitchen table in the box. Need to get that out here, get it on. Yep. Give it the full look. Is it going to fit LRT, that? LRT, Loopy Racing Tech. Is it going to fit that carburetor? Yeah. Okay. That's, no, that was the 4150 one. Yeah. Okay. You have the other one. See? Okay. It ain't going to be super clean, but we'll knock the dust off of it. Okay. Well, Ta-da! Looks good. You can might even be able to see over it. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. I'm real curious to see if the dominator gives me more mile an hour than the... Uh, you have any, any kind of leaks? So that clanging that real teeny when it now that sucked. Um, well, I got a coil ground off, but it's not exciting the coils. get this coil ground on and we'll see what it does but it didn't fire at all Supposed to crank it once it hits a certain RPM, it'll excite the coils, and it's not. My message. Nope. Eight thirty-three. And I don't know why. The coils aren't bad, are they? 
Shouldn't be. You find it? Yep. What was it? Huh? What was it? I think. <laughs> ah? I'm gonna go ahead and think that the the uh, tank sensor is not hooked up. <laughs> okay. So, pull the old girl in here, like that. Nice. Actually. Under that. Which is probably how it was. You need to unleave the spark plugs like that. Yeah, I'm gonna start. <laughs> It did for a second. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it. If it, hang on. It's still dripping. Yeah. And it's probably just dripping off of the. Can we just put paper towels down there so I can actually see? It's over on this side now. There. Huh? That little spot there. Oh. Well, it's leaking. We're gonna see it.
this weekend. That was my goal. Um, got a lot of stuff to figure out still. A lot of kinks to get ironed out. I still got work to do, but it runs. The engine seems fine. I didn't hear anything beating or banging. Um, the oil leak was just a, a bolt that I had lost throughout the whole process, and I didn't think it would leak. It kind of put every other hole so i'll have to get another bolt for the oil pan oil pan still got it's beat up and welded and missed a couple spots that was leaking but uh nothing too major it don't look like that can't be uh, sealed up somehow i don't know as i told her when, when the camera was off i'd clean it up real good and put some epoxy over the holes <laughs> so, i don't know well good thing you found out now versus later right why we check everything and everything else that it needs maybe this week we'll be able to drive it down the road or something who knows we'll find out